Hey, how's it going guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about how to use an oxygen concentrator at home. So in this video, we're gonna talk about two different things. Number one, what are the differences between a home concentrator and a portable? And number two, how to use both of these units at home. A home concentrator is a machine that you plug into the wall, it takes the outside air, filters it, and creates oxygen. It's a really simple machine that provides a continuous flow of oxygen. Now remember that word continuous because we're going to talk about it in part two. There are typically two types of home concentrators. There are five liter concentrators and 10 liter. So the five liter concentrators will go from one to five liters per minute and the 10 liters will go up to 10. Now make sure to ask your doctor first what liter flow you need because too much can be harmful and too little may not be enough. Once you figure out if you need a 5 liter or 10 liter concentrator, call a medical supply store because that will be the most trusted way to get your hands on one. And if you're in Houston, Texas, then scroll down and check out the link below to find out more information on complete medical supply. So now let's talk about portable oxygen concentrators. There are different brands and models out there and some of them go from one to three, one to five, or even one to six. So make sure you know which type of model you're buying. Portable concentrators also use a pulse dose mechanism instead of a continuous, meaning that every time you take a breath in, that's when the oxygen puffs out. They use this mechanism to conserve battery life, and that's why they're not recommended for sleeping because you might have irregular breathing throughout the night, and the pulse dose mechanism may not detect that. So these units are more conveniently used for travel and on the go. Most of these are also FAA approved, so you can bring them on an airline. I'd suggest to call the airline first just to see if they have any other restrictions or they require additional paperwork for you to bring it on. Now let's move on to the second part of the video where I'm going to unbox a home concentrator and also a portable concentrator to show you the differences on how to use them at home. All right, so first we're gonna unbox the home concentrator and I might speed the process up for you a little bit, but we're still gonna see what's inside. Okay, so now that we unboxed it, let's see what we got inside. Now the camera is going to be a little flipped as well because I'm using my front facing camera, but you can still follow along either way. The first thing we have here is concentrator itself. Now this is a five liter home concentrator by Dalton Medical. Like I said before, there are a lot of brands out there, but they technically all do about the same thing, which is filter and create oxygen. So let's see what else we got inside with the unit. We're gonna have the owner's manual, the humidifier tube, which I'll demonstrate how to use this uh, later on. And then we got a nasal cannula tubing, which will plug right into here and then into the patient's nose. I'm just gonna demonstrate what type of features that this concentrator has. A lot of concentrators are gonna have these similar uh, features on the front end. So we're gonna have the tubing connector or output right here. We're gonna have the on and off button right here. Uh, sometimes we'll have a brand that has the hours listed on the display out here so that you know how long you've used the unit. And also we'll have the liter flow over here. So this is a five liter concentrator, which will go from zero all the way up to five. All home concentrators should also have a filter on the side of the machine or sometimes in the back. This filter right here looks like it's screwed in, but others are easier to pop out and back in. You can look at the filter and see if it's dirty or if it has any dust on it. Usually they're gonna be hand washable, so you can just wash them with detergent or just hand wash and make sure they're completely dry before putting it back in because one of the main things that the warranty of the concentrators don't cover is water damage. Before turning on the machine, I'm gonna set up everything that goes with it just so you can see what options you have. First thing we saw is going to be the nasal cannula tubing. Sometimes you can get a mask as well, uh, but the connector on the end is going to be universal, so they should all fit the output here. Take the end of the tubing and push it all the way in. Make sure it's all the way to the back because sometimes if it's pulled out or if it's not back enough, then it might leak or you might not get enough oxygen that you're looking for. This is the first option you have to use the concentrator, meaning the tubing will go directly into the output and then the other end will go directly into your nose. Another option you have is using a humidifier. So we'll take this back out. 
and this is a humidifier bottle. Now what this does is makes the oxygen a little bit less dry coming in. So this is definitely optional. Um, not everybody may need it, but it's sometimes given with the unit itself. So it's something just to have and know about in case you do need it. It's gonna typically come with a tubing connector. So this tubing will go in here first. And then the other end of the tubing is gonna connect to the top of the humidifier. This part right here can hold the bottle just like that. When you do wanna use a humidifier, I'd suggest using distilled water and you should fill it up maybe only up to the halfway line, not all the way to the top. And once you're using the humidifier and it's filled up to that line, you can put the end of this tubing to this part here. So now there's something going from the output into the bottle, causing the water bubble and giving that moisture from this end and then directly into the nose from this end. Let's turn the machine on and plug it into a power outlet. Now that it's plugged in, we can turn it on. Usually with concentrators, there will be some blinking lights here. Different brands will, have, will do different things in the beginning, but this just means that it's turning on and just warming up. So you can let it do its thing for about 30 seconds to maybe a minute. Usually when that time is up, these lights will turn into a solid green. So let's just wait for that to happen. Now that it has a solid green light, you know that it's ready to use. And sometimes when there's an orange light over here, or maybe a red light over here, that means that there might be something going on with either the machine or some of the tubing that's linked up to it. So if there is an orange light, then don't get scared right away. Just check the owner's manual and see what type of things that can go wrong with it or just to see if it's something as simple as the connection not being plugged in all the way. Make sure to check that out first before you contact the manufacturer because it might just be an easy fix. The last thing to do with the machine here will be to adjust the liters per minute. This will go all the way from five or down to one. So you can just adjust it with this knob here. And when you're done with it, run it completely off and store it in a room temperature place and away from any smoke or anything that can be harmful. Now that we know about home concentrators, let's unbox the portable and see how it's different. So this is what a portable concentrator box may look like. It's fairly small, but probably weighs around 10 pounds or so. And this is from the brand Oxygo. This is gonna be the Oxygo Next, which is their newest machine. And it'll go from one to six liters per minute. Let's take a look at what we have inside. We have the nasal cannula, the manual, a car charger, and the home charger. So this you'll just plug into the power supply and use to charge the battery. And the last thing we have is the battery itself. So this one specifically, we sell a double battery at Complete Medical Supply, so I'm a little bit biased on the brand that I carry and what I try to sell to my customers. This one is gonna have double the battery life as a single battery. So when you do go out and buy a portable unit, I'd suggest to ask the clerk to see what type of battery you're getting and also the difference in price. Do your research and make sure to know what type of battery you're getting with the unit. Now that we have all the accessories, let's go and see what the unit looks like. So underneath that, we also have a carrying case for the unit. This one, like I said, it's with the OxyGo Next. So it's actually a really nice leather type of unit. I'm not gonna put the uh, case onto the unit for this video, but I'm just gonna briefly show you what the unit looks like and power it on. So it comes in that bubble wrap and will look like this here. So OxyGo Next. And the battery is not plugged in because they're not gonna you know, ship it with the battery already on the unit. The unit itself will have the output right here, the plus and minus for the leader flow, power button, and then some alert buttons to turn the sound off and on if you need it to. But it's basically a pretty small unit. I think it weighs around six pounds with the battery installed, but let's see what it does when it powers on. When you take the battery here, you're gonna take the unit with your other hand, and you're just gonna slide these pins here in first to you know, kind of slide in and fit together right over here. So just like this. And you, when you slide it in properly, it'll typically beep, letting you know that the uh, battery is attached to the unit. And now that it's attached, we can just hold this button down here 
and power it on. So it's gonna take about a second or two to actually start. You can kind of hear the noise, but not too much. It's already quiet compared to the other units I've seen, but the higher setting you put it on, it's gonna be a little bit louder. So let's look at the display. There's kind of a little screen here, so I don't wanna peel that off, but basically the plus and minus is gonna change the setting here from one to six. So this is at a six. And when you're ready to use it, the tubing will go here and it'll show you everything else underneath, like the battery life right here, um, if the sound is turned on or off, and just like a little mute button symbol right there. When you're done using the machine, you can power it off. Just hold it down for a sec. And before you store it away, make sure to see that it's completely turned off and then you can put it away. The last thing I wanna show on the machine is gonna be right here. So this is the filter for the machine. Um, speaking of filters and maintenance, the machine surprisingly doesn't need that much maintenance. The only thing over here will be the filter that you can open like that. And similar to the home concentrator, you can you know just hand wash this and make sure it's completely, completely dry before putting it in. And it will just snap back in. The last thing that needs to be changed every maybe 18 to 24 months is going to be the sieve beds. So these sieve beds here or columns, um, they're going to be the internal filters of the machine. Now these over time expire, so the machine will actually tell you when to have those changed out. And when it does kind of give you that alert to change your columns or change your sieve beds, you're going to want to call the company that you got it from and just see how much it'll be to change them out. So there we have it. We learned about the differences of a home concentrator and a portable. Then we showed you how to use the concentrators and see which one might be better for you at home. If you liked that video or maybe even learned something from it, then hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching this video.